Good afternoon and welcome to The Road to Recovery, The Road to Freedom with Mark and This is my uh, new headphones here, very flash This is my uh, 28 minute show every Friday I've been missing a couple of weeks Unfortunately I had a The council decided that it would be a clever idea To turn up at 7.30 at night And work to 1 in the morning outside my bedroom window With a steamroller And then they did it another four times so it wasn't much sleep and I complained to noise control again and again and again and of course nothing was done because unfortunately um, pretty much all institutions and most especially councils are full of arrogant ignorant people who really don't care about anybody else but themselves and I said to the chap in the council you know imagine for a minute if it was you would you not want someone to show you a bit of consideration, a phone call, a note in the letterbox, just so you can make other arrangements? Had I have known you were coming, I'd gone. And I think that's true of all parts of our society. Over time, we've come to treat each other with less and less consideration, and that is part of why we have such a problem with mental health these days and that at the end of the day is what my show is about is about mental health issues and you know in the past and I still find it today a lot of people try and put me down by saying oh you you admit it yourself you're mad if they disagree with something so it's still used as a form of abuse surrounded with shame and I think that just shows people's weakness and ignorance really um you know, not everyone in this world is the same, and if we were, what a boring place it would be. And, you know, we would achieve very little. If you look at all of the so-called great people of this world, Einstein, Tesla, whoever you might want to talk about, the, the great movers and shakers of this world, all those people have one thing in common. They were mad. They were completely bonkers, mate. If you sat down with them, you wouldn't be able to have a straight conversation with them. These people are different, but they're also exceptional and gifted in their own way. Um, just because you're not like everybody else doesn't make you less than everybody else. Not at all. All of us are everybody else and should be treated equally. And that is part of the reason why we have such a um, effed up system, I guess, is because of that, you know, because people just... In the last three generations, from my generation onwards, or actually just after my generation, pretty much the, the people who were like the, the children of my generation were basically spoiled and taught to expect instant gratification with your phone. You just push a button, order it, it's all about you. And um, this don't miss out this fear of missing out it's that's just greed it's just great oh, i want to grab it before someone else grabs it and push and shove and community radio stations like arrow and things like that are all about community about helping people to get through together as as a town as a village as a people as a nation all of us together showing a little bit of consideration and working towards each other and realising that not everybody is jolly and happy all the time and then when people do have problems, whatever it might be, it's up to the rest of us to get them into a better state, whether it be giving a bit of donation to the food bank. You know, no one in this country should ever, ever go hungry. No kid should have no shoes or a raincoat. It's disgraceful that you know, I was talking to a chap last night. He's just bought himself a brand new Mustang. I mean, really? Do you really need these toys? I find it especially prevalent in the boomers, of which I am one, right at the very end of the baby boomers. They are very, very selfish people, and they don't show much consideration towards others, and they are very intolerant and ignorant, and they really need to just open their minds up a little bit more. And that's what we try to achieve on community radio stations is to get people to pause, to think, well, perhaps 
instead of saying it's not my problem, realise that in so saying, you become the problem because you turn your back on things. You are the problem. You don't have to do much to improve the lot of a hell of a lot of people who are less well off than you. And if you are well off, well, perhaps you want to contemplate a little bit about being grateful for what you have. And what I've learned through my many, many years of trials and tribulations is to be more mindful. Things may be shite, but concentrating on those things doesn't lead to a good place. Whereas being mindful and being grateful for what you do have, thinking about those good things and planning for good things to happen, when you're mentally unwell, it all starts with the headspace, getting yourself into a good headspace. You know, I looked quite a lot into Eastern philosophy and this idea of, of mindfulness. It's not just being grateful, it's being aware in the moment with people. So when you talk, when you engage, you're totally with them. You're listening, you ask questions to show that you're thinking about what they're saying and the reaction you get from people is phenomenal because instead of talking at people and being dismissive and not listening, if you fully engage with somebody, you can feel that they are with you, close, and they feel that you're showing them respect. That's what it's about, respecting people by, by engaging and listening to them. Unfortunately, these smartphones, cell phones, whatever you want to call those pieces of junk, do exactly the opposite. They disengage people and they're just locked, not in this world, not in reality, not in the here and now. They are no longer living. They are now in that space, in their mind. And that space is not here and now. It's not real. It's just shit you're watching that's already happened. So now you're lost in the past and completely disengaged to the point where... If I talk to someone who's on the cell phone, they can't even hear me. They're not here anymore. They're lost in there. Um, it was a book I read once. What was the chap's name? I can't even remember. He wrote um, The Wasp Factory, if you ever get. That's a good read. Same chap. He wrote about these people sticking their heads in ceilings and seeing a light and the stars, and this one light would come at them and they would suddenly wake up in somebody else's body, living somebody else's life. Boom, like that. And that's kind of what cell phones to me are like. People are living a life that is not here and now. It is that life and they'd rather tap a message than talk to somebody. Now, when you type a message, you're somewhat disengaged and your ability to communicate appropriately is extremely encumbered by your ability to translate that information in a clear and succinct way. Okay, that's how I would explain it. So what you type is dumb, and dumb makes other dummies dumber. Okay, that's another way of putting it. So when you're talking to somebody, you can communicate much better. That's the whole point of it, and that's why I do radio, and, and I don't just write, because people often lose the plot after a few paragraphs if it's not really engaging them. Now, if you read someone like Mark Twain, oh, wow, talk about engaging you. Reread re -read something like Huckleberry Finn. It's an amazing, beautifully, wonderfully woven tale. For my money, it is probably the best writer stylistically of anybody, although if you want impact, then, you know, Charles Dickens. You read... Tale of Two Cities, and, and you, you read about the epoch of incredulity, and you think, what? And you read it again and again. I remember the first time I read it. I read that that statement, the best of times, the worst of times, etc., etc. And I read the epoch of incredulity, and it, it, I got a dictionary out, and it was, it's not what it's not what Dickens says, although he's you know he was an awfully clever man. He made up words like smog. Because London in those days had burned a lot of coal back in the 1880s and it was a smoke and mist became smog. Dickens invented that word and quite a few others. 
But to me, it wasn't the words that he used. It was the way he combined them that gave them... It unlocked a power that those individual words did not have alone. And once they were combined together, it's like basil and tomato. You know, they're just made to go together. And the, the sum is greater than the individual parts because of the combination. And so it's true of us. It's true of people. If we work together, we achieve so much more. Whereas if we're pitted against each other in an adversarial way, putting people down because of some perceived weakness, some slander or slight, some bad attitude towards something, that is what drives us apart and we fail. We fail as a people. This COVID thing that's been happening to us, you could see we were almost splitting at the seams at times. I saw people overseas protesting about being locked up and I'm thinking, yeah, would you rather lose half of your family? Because one day we're going to get a pandemic that will wipe us out. Not like COVID, it's a gentle little thing. It only took out, what, not even one in 20, not even one in 100. When the plague raged across Europe, in the 500s, um, and again in the 1100s, and again in the 1600s. The same one, bubonic plague, one, two, three, massive sweeps across Europe. It wiped out one in three. Now, modern medicine can't keep up with viruses. They're too, they're too quick. They're too agile. I wouldn't necessarily say clever, but they are adaptive. They change and change and change and they mutate because they're able to breed exponentially. In other words, they can go from 2 to 24 million in 24 hours. Boom, just like that. So it's not being able to keep up is the problem. However, what we've seen, with everybody suddenly washing their hands for a change, by the way, all of a sudden, not only is COVID minimised, but so is influenza. We find there's far less disease. There's more people alive now as a result of a pandemic than what there was before because people were bringing diseases into the country like influenza and knocking a 1,000 people out a year dead. Check the st statistics. It is true. So tourism was costing us a 1,000 lives a year just, to have, just for having them here because they're coming in in their winter to our summer full of flu. I don't care. I don't care if someone dies, they don't even think about it. They just hack and cough and sneeze all over people, cough into their hands and then touch things. You know, if nothing else, COVID has been a blessing in as much as it's taught us about how we transmit diseases. The filthiest part on your body, and again, check the statistics, it's true. It's the top end, it's your mouth. Your mouth is far, far, far dirtier than anything else. And when you sneeze and cough, Tiny, tiny, tiny little bits of spittle go into people's eyes, up their noses and in their mouths. You can't see it, but it does. And when you cough over something, you cover it in disease. Not, not, just, not just COVID, all kinds of nasty, nasty diseases. The nuts they used to have in bars, I remember they tested them and found at least five transmissible diseases, including hepatitis C and the bar nuts, because people don't wash their hands. So that's all it comes down to. And if people follow these simple things, then the mental health issues, like all the anxiety and the fear and a lot of that, goes away because you have confidence that everybody is working together. And in this country, in Aotearoa, I find that we do have a leaning towards helping each other. You know, I'm not running this radio station at all. I am doing a show for people who are doing far more than me and you know they're doing the mahi for their society for their community to bring people together when you watch overseas stuff hey that's overseas you can't do anything about that very much and they can't do much to you but here the here and now is what really matters friends family and community you know these are the things that bind the society together and I found that a lot of people said to me, oh, that being you know, locked up was terrible. And I said, well, now you actually can empathise properly with me because that's how I live every single day and have done for the last 10 years, you know, living in isolation. And that's what happens with people who end up on illness benefits. You know, 
that um, or invalids benefits, they end up isolated from the rest of society because everyone else is working nine to five. They have regular sleep patterns and they do their things in the weekend. So they have a set pattern which you are now excluded from. And not only that, the government also says, oh, you have possessions? Oh, no, 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 no. You have to sell all them. You have a boat? No, you're not allowed to own a boat if you're on a benefit. You're not allowed any possessions. You're allowed a car, but it's got to be a shitty one. You can't have a flash one. You know, you can't have anything decent in your life. Antiques, no, 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 no. Sell all those. You have to be poor. You have to be flat-ass broke and totally dependent because that's the rules, which to me violates people's human rights as far as I'm concerned. If somebody is ill, they should not be punished, financially punished for doing so. You want to live with someone, you should have the right to live with someone and not be taxed for it, not to have your benefit cut because you happen to live with your partner. It's just wrong. It's inhuman. You know, Lord alone knows we have little to live on. 20 grand to pay everything, rent, food, everything. <laughs> it's not possible. And so many people are, are driven to crime. The amount of theft that's going on in Wellington is just astronomical. You know, I laughed when I saw the figures and they said crime was down 21%. And I've just had three telephone conversations with people who have been ripped off. You know, um, there's a big demand for electric bikes. There's not that many coming into the country. So they're a target at the moment. And, uh, you know, I've got mine locked well away. And please don't tell Wins that I've got an electric bike. It was a gift from my family. I didn't buy it. I don't have that much money. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that I enjoy, and it's great for my mental and physical health. I found it extremely beneficial, and it's helped me to get out and about. And for me, you know, working my way out of, of a very deep rut that was just basically feeding on itself, eating away at, it, it, it all the good things inside of me, I found by going out, even in the rain, but just making the effort just to go out, look around at the birds. I've got into bird watching now and just being a bit more mindful of the good things distracts you from all the terrible things that are happening. You know, I lost my mum, my dad and my little sister all within three years. You know, one after the other, boom, boom, boom. Very, very hard thing to handle, people falling apart and crying and weeping and carrying on, and it's, it tears you in too. But you've got to get on with life, and you can't just live in the past or live for mourning. And the hardest thing is to get over something. And, and it's right to mourn people. It's right to miss people. You know, you love them, and it's hard. But what I'm saying is life is for the living and you have to think about how you can move on in a positive direction and it is always looking at the plus, not concentrating on the minus, but looking at the positive and thinking, what can I do? How can I go forward? Yourself first, but also take others with you. Show compassion by all means, but try to keep moving forward in small ways and small plans. Give yourself something to do, a little achievable goal that you can concentrate on and as much to distract you from your problems, even if it be temporarily. And you can have a little bit of enjoyment because you don't have enough to be drinking booze or, 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 or going out to concerts. I mean, it's not possible in my situation. But you can do things that don't cost you any money. I like playing cards, the old playing cards, Yucca 500, that sort of thing. You go around, you know, and sit up and drink some coffee or tea and um, play some cards around someone's house one night. Really good fun. It's something that people in cities don't do much anymore. And, you know, you may even find that you've got a group of people together and you can maybe get some, maybe a game of Scrabble at the op shop, cost you a couple of bucks, and, you know, endless hours of entertainment and good fun. And it's not just about playing the game, it's, it's socialising, chatting, maybe you could have a meal together, all chip in, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too flash, but a nice meal, a cup of coffee on a cold winter's night, 
it's easier to heat one room for four people than it is four rooms for individuals to sit in their watch and tally turning into couch potatoes. So what I'm trying to encourage with my show is more social engagement because it's good for people's mental health to talk to people and to do something together that's positive rather than just be on those effing cell phones constantly. It's nonsense. My my brother-in-law's daughter was fixated on her phone last night. I said, what are you watching? It was Shortland Street. I said, do you do that all the time? She said, yeah. Well, I didn't say anything too disparaging, but I went, oh, boy, wow. Yeah, and... I kind of thought, well, I'd much rather have a conversation with you right now, and you can watch that rubbish any time, you know? So this is what my show is about today, is just encouraging people to try and get together and break bread together. That's always the greatest way. It, it uplifts you in a spiritual sense, not just in a physical way. And it's good to mix if you can. The, the worst part, about suffering from depression or, 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 or bipolar or schizophrenia, the worst thing about it is when you're isolated because your problems tend to feed on themselves. And the more you lock yourself away, if you're just in the dark, on the couch, watching telly all day and all night, alarm bells should be ringing that this is not getting better. And it's all right to ask for help. And by help, I mean a, a professional, right, who can actually make some suggestions and direct you in the right way. And be open to that. Be open to listening to people who have years and years and years and years of experience. Take on board these suggestions and try and just do one or two things positive to get that ball rolling. And you'll find, once it's rolling, is momentum. And it encourages you to do more, as it has done for me. And, you know, I um, I would love to be able to afford one of those Zoom cameras to take some of the photos of the birds, but it's really good for me to sit down by the river and just enjoy it, enjoy what's around me and get lost in that rather than just think about all my troubles all the time. When I'm at home, sitting at the table having a cup of coffee and a piece of toast, I think about my problems all the time and it just consumes me. It's all around me and all prevailing fog. So, you know, just getting a bit of fresh air makes a huge difference. Man, you know, time runs so quick. I think we've got something like about two minutes to run. So before I finish for the day, I, I want you to think about that. I want you to encourage your friends to tune in to things like Arrow and Wire Rapper TV. You know, it's a great little show there that... Um, highlights all different things going on around the place and try and support live bands as well because you've got to remember that musicians really really struggle um to make a living in this country it's extraordinarily hard at the moment um herb's doing a tour and there's the uh, pink floyd experience they're doing a bit of um tom petty as well so they're kicking around not just the big bands but those smaller bands they are so good Luckily, my sister showed me a ticket to Herb, so I'm really looking forward to that. The Pahia to a club hotel tomorrow night. Be there or be square. It's going to be a fantastic show. Those boys are amazing. So, you know, try and support local business and, and local musicians and stuff, especially now with the COVID. Let's just try and make this community a little bit better by by supporting those things and engaging in people a little bit more and, you know, put your cell phone away for a while. Don't just be on it all the time because, you know, it's not nice. And in finishing, I just want to say thank you very much to the sponsors who sponsor the show. Most of them are trusts in New Zealand on air and the likes, and it's through their generosity that um, community radio stations like this can happen. And through the support of all of our listeners in the beautiful and sunny Hawke's Bay and um, the magnificent Wairapo and I must say um, the Carpety Coast is pretty damn fine out there too. You know, you're very, very lucky to have not not just um, 
you know, all, all the great beaches, but Carpety Island, if you can get out there, it's, it's amazing. Um, Ward Island, too, is a, a great little fishing spot, and all those places down that Carpety Coast, I remember Rao Matty South we used to go to when I was a kid, and back in the day you could get white bait there. Um, I wouldn't encourage it now, you know, leave the native species alone now, I think. But... Um, yeah, great little part of the coast. We're very lucky to have such fantastic places in this country and it's nice to get that sort of support from the listeners and I'd encourage you all to, to you know, spread the good word. And other than that, of course, why wrap a TV and, and last but by no means least, I guess we should put them first. Veronica and Michael are Trojans who do a fantastic job. Um, they could probably be extraordinarily well paid working for a much bigger organisation that really doesn't give a shite about people, but they do it because they care about their community and they do tremendous work behind the scenes to make all this stuff roll seamlessly. So a big thanks to them. I hope you enjoyed my show, Food for Thought, and um, I'm hoping and praying <laughs> that I'll make it for next Friday, but that's in the lap of the gods, so we'll see how we go. But all things being equal... I'll see you next Friday, so thank you for tuning in, and uh, bye for now.